So we all know the biggest football game of the year is happening this weekend. And whether you're an expert in all things pigskin or new to the game, Anissa Ramirez is here with some weird science behind America's favorite game. She's a former Yale professor and co-author of the book Newton Football. We're so excited to have you here on the show, Ramisa. Thank you. Um, so give us a little bit of a rundown. I would assume you probably had a pretty busy week. This has been an extremely busy week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something about deflated balls. Right? That uh, <laughs> seems to be in the news. So were you always a football fan? Actually, I knew very little about football. I grew up with uh, football fans, mm -hmm. um, but I love science. And um, I had an opportunity to show science using football because everyone loves football. In fact, more people watch that big game that's coming up than, <laughs> than vote in the election. So is that I thought, right? Yeah. So I thought, well, <laughs> this is a great way to show, uh, show the science behind the game. So what do you think about those deflated balls? <laughs> well, <Deflate I've>, game. <laughs> yeah, I've spent a lot of time. I, I don't think Mother Nature did it. I think, I think she's really? off the hook. I think she contributed, but that's not the full story. Hmm. But you know, there's a study that's going to happen right now, so hopefully we'll know more in a we'll couple of months. We'll get to the bottom of that. That's so right. uh, kind of an interesting evolution in how football came to be what it is today. That's right. You know, it's funny. We call it the pigskin, but if I look here, it says cowhide. Now, why is that? I don't know. Because the original football was made from a pig's bladder. Is that right? Kind of gross, huh? Wow. Yeah, so, so that's where we get the name pigskin. And it, it was actually a ball that was a little bit more round. And then it eventually evolved to be more of a cone shape because that was more of a passing game. So we learned lots of things like that about how it's aerodynamic. And we talked to a guy who studies uh, airplanes, and he could tell us a lot about the science behind this, the football. Wow, pretty good. And what about the bounce of the ball? The bounce of the ball is really, really funny because, you know, if it was a baseball or a basketball, you'd know exactly where it would go. But a football, if I drop it, you have yeah. no idea. In fact, you could have a bet during that Because of the game. shape? That's it's the... because of the shape. In fact, the mathematician would call the shape the prolate spheroid. And what's really funny about that is that, you know, these big football players are like warriors, but when the ball is fumbled, they're like kindergartners, just scrambling <laughs> to get the ball, right? Sure. And so that's the drama of the game. And that's randomness. A, a scientist would call that randomness. And that's actually part of this field called chaos theory. You can't predict where the ball's going to go. Pretty interesting stuff there. So uh, in your book, you mentioned woodpeckers and rams could actually help. That's right. Where does that come into play? That's right. Well, you know, we're in the midst of this concussion epidemic. Okay. And so when I was writing Newton's Football with Alan St. John, we were trying to figure out where, what animals don't do the same thing but their heads and don't get concussions. Mm -hmm. So the question we asked is, why don't woodpeckers get concussions? Well, they are, because if you think about what they do all day long, right? They peck, they peck 12,000 times a day. 12,000 okay. times a day. And they're not pulling any punches. They're, they're pecking at levels that would give us a concussion and in some cases kill us. So why is that that they're able to survive? Well, it's because they have smaller brains. Now, smaller brains can handle bigger forces. Mm -hmm. That may seem kind of like highfalutin, but you'll, you know this intuitively. Let's say I had my cell phone here and my laptop okay. and, I, and I dropped them both. My cell phone would survive, but my laptop I might be a little worried about. S Valid point. Okay. So smaller things can handle bigger forces. And so that's one of the reasons why they can survive. Got it. And let's talk about helmets there. They actually sure. have caused a little bit more damage, you say, in the game. Absolutely. The helmet <laughs> was never de designed to mitigate concussions. It was actually designed to prevent why, the reason why it was created was back in the, you know, uh, early 1900s. It's because guys were actually dying from football. And the reason why they were dying is skull fractures. Okay. So that's why the helmet was created. Now, in, in Newton's football, we talk about when we instituted the face mask, that's what gave rise to the trouble that we have today. Because that's when we started using our heads to, uh, to, to, to tackle. Mm -hmm. And that's what gave, gave rise to the concussion epidemic. So the helmet was never designed to prevent concussions. It was always designed to prevent skull fractures. And I it's see. only now that uh, we have this problem today. Very good. Well, interesting stuff. Where can we find your book? Oh, you can find it on Amazon, independent bookstores, Barnes & Nobles, anywhere where they have books. Pretty easy stuff there. And i got to ask you, who are you rooting for? Um, I think a football team's going to win. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you.